Welcome back, and for those of you who haven't seen enough on the doors, here's the other door now with all the uh, locks all uh, hooked up and working, and also with the door seal uh, just temporarily taped in place. I wanted to be able to take it off later so we could paint that frame and bonding it on or, or sort of gluing it on would be difficult uh, to get it off later on. So anyway, we're in the process of uh, getting everything tightened up here for pressurization, as you can see. And one of the things um, Dan did was create this little bucket here where we put dry ice in so we can create um, a sort of like a little bit of a smoky fog or whatever so we can find leaks inside the cabin. And uh, here we are sort of trying it out for the first time and it actually worked um, creating this sort of fog but it was very difficult to see where it was or if, if anything where it was pulling um, the fog um, or the smoke out through any of the holes that we have because there are some leaks in the cabin that we're sort of working through um, as you'll see in a little bit um, anyway that that actually it, it did the job but it wasn't I wasn't able to find any leaks with it so um, we had one go around on it with some dry ice and that was it but basically that's how it worked just creating that little fog like that it's kind of fun but just uh, didn't give us what we needed so here's one of the initial attempts um, to pressurize the cabin. So we see we've got the uh, little bulb there for inflating the door seals. They're both basically hooked up with a little T-junction. And so it takes about 20 pumps there to pump up both of them um, to seal off the cabin. And that works great. Those um, seals, when they're sitting where they need to be, because, uh, you know, they're not held very well right now just with a bit of uh, masking tape, um, they actually seal the doors great no problem at all and so we've got this little digital gauge there and, and uh, Dan's uh, hooked up the got the valve there to start putting pressure in from the compressor and you might be able to see there so we've got to uh, let's see close up a little bit better we've got the um, I think he's just firing it up right now you can actually hear it going in there 0.3 psi on there so the first couple of runs um, once we got everything sort of sealed up we were just getting sort of 0 0.4, 0 0.5, slowly worked it up. And now we're, uh, I'm in the cabin uh, just trying to hear where some of the leaks are. I've actually got this corner uh, marked off there because we've got a leak in where the parachute strap goes. And we're trying to find that one and actually haven't really had any success yet and trying to figure out some different ways of being able to find it. Um, they're not supposed to be able to get um, pressurized air in through that parachute strap. It's supposed to be sealed off. Um, but anyway, we'll figure that one out. So um, here I am in the cabin and just get, waiting for Dan uh, just to fire it up and start pumping air in there. And uh, you can immediately feel it when it starts coming in. Um, you feel your ears getting tight and you've got to equalize. Uh, even just, you know, with less than one PSI, uh, you can you can actually feel it happening. So, but it, uh, and it was pretty hot in there too because it was sort of... Uh, uh, I guess actually this is about lunchtime. I think. Um, uh, actually, no, it was I think it was about eleven o'clock on uh, Thursday when I was doing this. Um, but yeah, it's neat. Uh, you can it's sort of like being in a jet. You can hear the air sort of coming in, and you feel it pressurizing. And um, we fixed most of the leaks that we have. You know, just finding places where the air is getting out because you know a bolt wasn't sealed right on like the seatbelt mounts or something like that and uh, it's able to hold a decent amount of pressure already so what we're doing is we're actually going for a maximum of five and a half psi the fea has been done to handle i think about 7.3 so 30 percent um, safety margin but five and a half psi at 25,000 feet will give us a cabin that's equivalent to uh, 8,000 uh, feet um, above sea level so that's what we're shooting for and we're just we're going to slowly work our way up there we're not just you know gonna hit it and and see how it goes because you don't want to see if we're going to have any failure points along the way but uh, as you'll see in a little bit we've taken it up to about one and a half uh, psi so far uh, which is a good starting point and uh, once we figure out this leak with the uh, parachute straps we'll be able to take it up further And here's a subsequent run, and uh, as you can see, this time we're using the laptop 
uh, running through the ECU and we've got this uh, digital sensor there that, that um, I purchased and unfortunately I got the one that gives absolute pressure instead of gauge pressure so I'm going to be um, getting a different one because this one is showing you know the actual pressure plus atmospheric pressure and we just want one like the other gauge really that just shows um, the pressure differential from outside the cabin because that's really what's important that you know, we don't go more than five and a half over what's outside the cabin but anyway as you can see here it's running up and obviously the top there shows you the number and then the bottom there is a graph where it's uh, moving up and uh, Dan's just got it set up he's going to cut it off when it gets to 15 and, and a half which is about one a uh, 1 1.4, 1.35, 1.4 uh, overall gain and he cuts it off and then you can see how slowly it's sort of leaking back down again because uh, of the various uh, leaks that we have and we do want to have some leakage uh, because you need to turn the cabin over every half hour so you have fresh air in there so it's actually good to have some leakage um, anyway and uh, moving on here's Jeff uh, working on trimming the uh, the winglet part of the wing spar just bring it down to two inches wide because uh, it's it's uh, two and three quarter inches wide everywhere else but as it goes up to the top of the winglet it only needs to be two inches wide so he's just trimming it off with a Dremel saw and here's some of the pieces for the dash now that are um, in my car ready to be dropped off at the upholsterer and I spoke with them today and it's going to be about four weeks before we get our stuff back and here's an interesting thing this is my um, sort of so far failed but I think promising attempt to try and push air into the parachute strap to see where it's coming out uh, it, not only in the cabin but also down the other end here so it does leak out down there um, when the strap comes through but it's leaking in the cabin as well so we're going to try that again next week and here's Jeff trimming off one of the elevator skins this is one of the lower ones that got done uh, the other day and so all of them are done now the last one uh, got done uh, yesterday on Friday so it won't be long when we actually be able to start assembling uh, those pieces as well and Dan was back down in Florida on uh, Friday so um, I didn't have really a helper so I decided to um, do something else that was productive so I worked on creating these uh, bell cranks for the aileron controls and these ones live in the wings so I'm just cutting from some uh, 8 inch 6061 um, aluminum and just on the machine there so I had to cut out 8 different pieces that get uh, riveted into two different bell cranks along with that um, bearing that you just saw just now so a mixture of just using the regular drill bit on the end there and also using the end mill here to uh, cut out the holes and uh, cut out the actual shapes themselves and you know a couple of hours work to do all this uh, not too difficult um, so at least I've got those ones you know underway now and there's really not much more for me to do in the way of these this type of milling and I, I didn't want to send these out either because you know you spend hundreds of dollars just getting someone else to do a couple of parts like this and it's not worth it so uh, here's one of the uh, elevators there just with the skins sitting that's looking at the bottom side of it and um, actually that, what, that was just the skin and here's one of the other ones so that's the bottom side there just with some of the ribs just sort of sitting in place there and this is what it looks like with the uh, upper surface on the top there so obviously it's not bonded together yet it's just being dry fit but those uh, pieces fit together nicely and that makes up the elevator and that'll nest into um, the underside of the foreplane as you'll see uh, later on so that's the last of um, the actual skins and parts and stuff that are being laid up now I think there's nothing really else to lay up and here we are a little bit further underway and uh, finishing off um, cutting out these brackets that make up these bell cranks. So it was productive getting this done. I didn't have any problems. And, and these are the ones there. Kind of look like Mickey Mouse ears, but they're basically the ones that make up the bell crank. And uh, the other thing I had to do, as you'll see in a minute, was just quickly cut out some uh, covers there for the defrost vents for um, the air conditioning system coming out of the top of the glare shield and you'll see that shortly and uh, yeah this is it just now just starting out so these are just basically some straight sort of slotted brackets that will get um, 
powder coated and they'll uh, go on top there of the uh, of the dash there it is just sort of uh, in the process of finishing off so that, that was another job done and uh, meanwhile Jeff has got these um, closeouts there at the radius of the spars nicely fitted and uh, you know it's trimmed off so they could fit in there and they're ready to be bonded into place and I think we're going to fill that cavity with some foam as well just to make it even beefier in, on the corner there so you don't have to worry about any stresses there and it's a Friday afternoon now and Jeff and Devin just getting ready to lay up that last elevator skin and here I'm working with the uh, rivets um, to put together those bell cranks and I'm just using a little rivet cutter there to trim them just to the right length and as you can see here I've already started riveting the first one together so there's the the uh, bearing in the middle there and then four different pieces that make up that bell crank and the other one's just ready to get underway and here they are both done so it didn't take me too long to get those riveted together so that's the last of the bell cranks and as I said those ones sort of live in the wings and help actuate the uh, aileron and here is these uh, covers now for uh, the defrost vents on the top of the dash so those are just finished off and I just sanded the edges just to take the sharp bits off they can go to powder coat and uh, here's that last skin now so that one's done and uh, can be released from the mold on Monday and that's the last of the big skins last of any of the big parts now we only got a couple of tiny little ones to do now and here's one of those bell cranks in its bracket and this is basically how it'll work so there'll be uh, a rod there connected to this part there going through that hole and hooking up to the aileron and then another rod connected here which runs down the spar and hooks up to the other bell crank that's at the end of the main spar and that's how that'll actuate um, the aileron so anyway that's our update for this week and uh, tune in again uh, on Tuesday and see where we get up to with respect to pressurization and possibly uh, beginning to get the wings ready to assemble so thanks again for watching